Anderson Sanchez. I want to know. Knowing what your body is going through helps you to make sense of physical symptoms you may experience. Also, knowing when fertilization is most likely to happen is very important for planning for that bundle of joy. Knowing also prevents unplanned pregnancies as well. I would like for you to be able to say at the end of today's episode that I am in control. I am informed. I can make informed decisions. Women are born with as many immature eggs or oocytes as they will ever have in their lifetime. These ovaries are full of follicles like we see here. Each follicle has one oocyte that is able to mature to become a, a mature ovum or egg. Each follicle has one oocyte that is able to become a mature ovum or egg. The ovaries play two critical roles in the female reproductive system. The first role is the ovaries act as glands by secreting important sex hormones, including estrogen and progesterone. The second vital role that the ovaries play in female reproduction is that the ovaries act as gonads, and they do this by housing the follicles that develop into mature ova or eggs. The female has two ovaries, one on the right and one on the left. The ovary that participates in each monthly cycle changes. They basically take turns. For example, one month the right ovary will release an oocyte and the next month the left ovary will release the oocyte. This is why women who have damage or loss to one ovary are still fertile and able to have plenty of healthy offspring. Let's talk briefly about the fertility window. From puberty to menopause, women are only able to conceive during about a six day window of time out of their monthly cycle. Women can only get pregnant on the day of ovulation or the five days immediately preceding ovulation. This is very important, so let's talk about when you can predict that that will be. Ovulation usually is going to start about 14 days after the onset of the first day of your last menstruation. Having intercourse from about day 10 to about day 14 of your monthly cycle increases your chance of getting pregnant. As I mentioned before, females, females are born with as many follicles as they will ever have in their entire lifetimes. The female is born with hundreds of thousands of follicles in each ovary. Uh, thank God they don't all become children. Um, each of these follicles houses a single immature egg. About once every 28 days, one of those follicles in the ovary will come to maturation and it'll create one single ovum. The phase in which this process occurs is called the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. Once the ovum has matured, ovulation occurs. Ovulation is when the mature egg is released from the ovary and enters the fallopian tube. The fallopian tubes connect the ovaries to the uterus. The uterus is also known as the womb because if you were to become pregnant, this is where your fetus would develop. Fertilization 
of the egg occurs in the fallopian tube, not in the uterus as a lot of people might think. The ova may also be fertilized while in the fallopian tubes if sperm is present following sexual intercourse. Now, if the egg is not fertilized, it will then break down and it will be expelled from the uterus along with the uterine lining during menstruation. Now the menstrual cycle is pretty complicated. Um, for this reason, we're actually not going to cover it in great detail here. We're going to cover that in a lot more detail in our next video. Um, today we will do an overview just so you have an idea of the function of the anatomy that we're talking about today. menstrual cycle, it starts with something called the follicular phase. This goes from day one of your menstrual cycle to about day 14. What happens here is you have the follicle develops in the ovary and it will house one single mature ovum. Once that ovum is mature, ovulation will occur. What happens here is the mature egg is released from the follicle. The now empty follicle will transform into what is called the corpus luteum, which is Latin for yellow body, typically because of the way that it looks. So the decayed or leftover portion of the follicle called the corpus luteum is actually very important for the luteal phase, which is the phase that follows ovulation. So let's just look one more time and a quick overview of what the menstrual cycle is. Um, day one is actually considered the, uh, to be defined as the first day of active bleeding or menstruation. If you are a female, you may have noticed that your doctor or nurses will ask you um, every time you go to the doctor when the first day of your last period was. The reason that they're asking this is they want to know where you're at in your cycle because this is going to change your hormonal levels as well as your temperature. Here we see the thickening of the uterine wall in this animation that I've made for you. So let's talk about why do women bleed? Every 28 days or so, a woman's body prepares itself for pregnancy, just in case, whether the woman gets pregnant or not. And it does this by thickening the walls of the uterus to receive a fertilized egg. When the egg does not get fertilized, hormones trigger the thickened lining of the uterus to then break down. And then they leave the body in the form of a blood-like secretion. This is what we call menstruation. The uterus is also known as the womb because this is where a pregnant female will, um, will keep the fetus and this is where the fetus will grow and develop. And there we have our baby here. Unfortunately, this is uh, not to scale, so. <clears throat> I think giving birth would be a lot easier if the baby was that much smaller. Uh, next, let's talk about the cervix. Um, the cervix is the opening from the uterus to the vagina. 
When a woman is getting ready to give birth, um, a doctor or nurse or medical professional will usually check the cervix to see how much it has dilated. Um, the cervix must be dilated or get bigger um, in order for the baby to be able to pass through to the outside world and be born. Not to scale. The vagina. The vagina is the birth canal for the baby. It is also the receptacle for spermatozoa during sexual intercourse. Let's do a brief tour of uh, some of the external anatomy of the female reproductive tract. The vulva is the collective name that is used for all of the external female genitalia that are in the pubic region. We see a diagram of some of those key functions, uh, some of those key structures here. The vulva includes the labia majora and the labia minora, the clitoris, the urethra, and the vaginal opening or vaginal orifice as it is uh, labeled here in this diagram. So the vaginal orifice is uh, somewhat protected by two layers of uh, protective folded skin. These are the labia majora, which is the larger ones, and the labia minora. Um, this is the urethra. Um, the urethral opening is the canal by which urine is able to be expelled from the body. Um, and it is, um, it is just anterior to the vaginal orifice. The clitoris is the most sensitive part of the vulva. It's equivalent to the head of the penis in males, but in females it has no real function. 